Hi, my name is Josh Mullen and welcome to my funding and marketing presentation. During this presentation I will be describing to you a number of funding options available that I will be looking at when coming up with a project idea for Preston North End in the community. That's where I've done my placement at. I'll also be focusing on the required preparation that you have to undertake when coming up with a funding bid, such as planning and coming up with a budget. Okay, so firstly, a brief background on my, my uh, placement provider, which is Preston North End. Over the past few months, I've been completing my 30-hour placement there. The Trust's main purpose is to take Preston North End Football Club into the local community, delivering objectives around sports participation, education, health and social inclusion, using the power of football and a range of multi-sports. Preston North End pride themselves on being a family oriented club, and the community team plays a significant part in that role. The Community and Educating Trust is a self-financed department of the football club and ger generates funds by working with partners such as the EFL, the Premier League Charitable Fund, the Big Lottery Fund and, and the Football Foundation. They also raise money through school work, through donations from local businesses and through holiday camps. Altogether, the community team are a vibrant, energetic and passionate team but with lots of qualifications such as UEFA and standard coaches, primary QTS teachers, PGCE teachers and a variety of other union degrees. So now I'm going to look at market research. Sports marketing focuses both on the promotion of sports events and teams as well as the promotion of other products and services through sports and events. It is a service in which the element produced can be a physical product or a brand name. Then there is the funding side, which is known for providing financial resources to finance a need, programme or project. As defined by Shank 2009, sports marketing is the specific application of marketing principles and processes to sports products and to the marketing of non-sports products through association with sports. So there are a number of benefits of market research. So the first one is to understand who to target, which is important when coming up with a funding project. It allows you to give better products and then you can look at your target audience effectively. You can find out people's needs and wants. You can adapt your product depending on the research gathered so you can change your ideas. You can look at the gaps in the market and you can use your resources better. So one way I gained research was by collecting primary research. I created a number of questionnaires which are handed to local sports clubs and lo local facilities as this gave me a chance to target my audience as widely as possible. And as Jones and Grattan should suggest, primary research generally generally has involved of the original data already out there. Also, using online material, I used polls for Facebook and Twitter where people could vote of what they would like in, the, in their project, for example, where it would be held and the cost of the project. I also tried to use secondary data research, such as government statistics, company accounts and internal reports. I used this secondary research when just discussing with my placement just why the project is need, needed. And Jones and Grattan also su suggest that secondary research refers to research where no such original data is collected, but the project uses this existing sources of data. Altogether, I will use both primary and secondary research within my funding bid to back up my opinions. Also, the marketing mix. The marketing, when gaining research, I will be using the marketing mix to help me when making the important decisions. The marketing mix is known as a con combination of factors that can be controlled by a company to influence customers to purchase its products. So when I'm looking at the marketing mix, it's the seven P's. So the first P is product. A product is an item that is built or produced to satisfy the needs of a certain group of people. You must ensure to have the right type of product that is in demand for your market. The next is price. It's basically the price of the cost of your project. This can determine how many participants we can trap to the, our project and the project's profit and survival, loss and profit after the funding bid has been taken place. Next is the place and physical environment. Placement or distribution is extremely important part of the pro product mix definition. You have to position and distribute the project in a place that is accessible to for potential buyers and customers. Next is the people. Through research it's important to discover what the people want and whether there are enough people around in your area and environment. Also promotion is another one. Promotion is a very important factor of the marketing mix as it can boost your brand recognition and sales. Promotion includes various elements like sales organisation, public relations, advertising and sales promotion. 
The final one is the process. The systems and processes of the organisation affect the execution of the service. So you have to make sure that you have a well-tailored process set in place to minimise minimize cost. Altogether, the marketing mix is a simple and easy model to follow. And for anybody interested in looking at the marketing mix, I just followed the website um, to help me with the seven definitions. Now I'm going to look at a budget. It is important that when planning a funding bid, you have a budget in place. This allows me to need to know what areas of the project is requiring funding and the ways we as a club are going to distribute that funding and ensure that the budget will help cover the costs and we won't run out of any money. As HRL 2006 suggests, a budget is a business plan for the short term, expressed mainly in financial terms. It converts a long term plan into an actual blueprint in the future. So why is a budget important? A budget is important because it allows you the chance to communicate the budget with other people. You can promote forward thinking and planning. It provides a system of control, shows transparency, and it also, most importantly, shows the funders that you know what you're talking about. Overall, when piecing together a budget plan for the project, I will break down my budget into a few headings. The first heading will be marketing and communication. The next will be coaching fees, equipment, the fees for people, participating in the fund, in the project, um, cost of hire facilities, a contingency fund which is a reserve of money to cover on any money that we might have to go into if we are desperate. So my project idea, the project idea is known as Girls Fantasy Football Festival. The, the aim of the project is to make sure it's fun, enjoyable and potentially lead to growth in the participant levels of girls football in that area. After discussing with a number of staff members at the football club, we believe that one area we could look to develop and improve is the number of girls participating in football in the Preston and Northwest area. Football is now officially the biggest female team sport in England, and figures show that the other last year over four, one, 147,000 female players competed in league and cup competitions, a figure which has risen from 10,400 in 1993 when records began but there is still a massive growth of potential with women in football. As 1.1 million girls play kickabout football that have many barriers to overcome. For example, women and girls from some ethnic communities remain unaware of the opportunities which are out there, and there are cultural, religious and social norms to overcome. The same applies to disabled women and girls. The involvement of females in football will also extend beyond playing. We, as a Community Trust are looking to develop female coaches, referees and administrations, administrators. Altogether, women's football is on the rise. It's starting to get more recognisable on t television, allowing girls to watch their sporting role models. For example, the Women's World Cup and other football games, FA Cup, are getting shown on TV. And also on Sky Sports, there is a, a, an hourly show just focusing on women's sport, which has been introduced recently. I believe this project would boost the participant levels of girls football in the northwest area. Through my link with being a student at UCLan and also working at UCLan, we'll be able to try and get some volunteers down that are maybe on a course at UCLan, as I know that on the sports coaching development course you have to do a certain amount of placement and voluntary work, so that we'll be looking to try and get some students down to help run the event. This will benefit both the project, as we need staff to run it, but also allow the students the opportunity to build upon their experience and put on the CV. And from a personal point, I know how important that is. The project will be hosted at UConn Sports Arena during a bank holiday weekend in August, as it offers state-of-the-art facilities, as it has seven grass pitches and a number of artificial, artificial pitches in case of bad weather. This will be at a cheaper cost, as I am a student at UConn. It will, it will be held in the August bank holiday weekend, as availability should be good, and it allows local football clubs to come and offer their clubs the chance of attracting more women's football to them and they can come down and join in and also watch other female players. If fortunate to receive money for the, this amazing festival, we will be leading to expanding the current football development centre we have in place. Mel Brown, the female development officer, will also be aiming to use the funding for more women-only events targeting disabled and other ethnic communities that we don't currently do. Also, promotion is all, uh, very important. I will be looking to work alongside the social media expert at the football club to try to get him to promote our project through s Facebook and Twitter accounts as they have a number of followers that are pressing off and millions of followers, so that will be a good way of promoting the event. 
I understand that not every individual has social media accounts, so we're going to use leaflets and hand them out and post them in the local area. Me and other members of staff are looking to go into schools and other sports and women only sessions and, have, and ask if we can have permission to go into their classes afterwards or before and have a word with female and females in school and also in older generations to try and get them to come down. So what funders should we consider? The three funders I'm looking at are two national and one local. The two national are Sport England, Awards for All, and the local one is the Preston Sports Forum. So the first one I'm looking at is Sport England. So a brief background on Sports England. They have a, a strategy in place which is working towards an active nation 2016 to 2021. They've created a new investment programme focusing on tackling a number of things such as inactivity, or focusing on children and young people as a person's attitude to sport is often shaped by their experience as a child. Uh, taking a sport and activity in the mass market as millions of people drop out on a regular basis each year. Volunteering. Volunteers are a crucial part in grassroots football as I'm aware of, but also in sport in general. So look, without them, sport would ground to halt. Local delivery, where people live and work, plays a big part in the choices they make. The facilities. The facilities are important as the places where people play and train has a massive impact on whether they're going to carry on to participate in sport and supporting us and supporting sport's core market. So the funding schemes they have available, they also have a Sport of Eight funding scheme which is a £56 million lottery funding that gives more young people the opportunity to discover a sport that they love. The programme gives 14 year olds to 25 year olds who are not particularly sport 40 access to 6 to 8 weeks of free or subsidised coaching in a range of sports. So advantages of using Sport England. They use a national lottery funding, so if we're going for funding, we're also contributing to charity, which is a good thing. Disadvantage, um, it only meets a few of the objectives that we as a project have in place, so we might not get, I, don't, I feel we might not get um, good a chance of getting accepted than others. And the Sport of Eight um, programme, only focusing on 14 to 25 year olds, and we're looking at a wider range of age range. So the next is the Awards for All Big Lottery Fund. So a brief background on the Awards for All. It is responsible for distributing 40% of all funds raised for good courses, which is about 11 pence per pound of every lottery ticket bought, which is around £670 million pound last year. You can apply for Awards for All if you're a community or non-profit profit group, parish or town council, health body or school. The aims... The aim to distribute £300 or to £10,000 for grassroots and community activity that aims to improve life for local people and neighbourhoods. They will fund activities that benefit the community, including hosting event activity or performance, purchasing new equipment or materials, running training courses, setting up pilot projects or starting up a new group carrying out special repairs or conversation work expenses for volunteers. Advantages of using the Big Lottery Fund is that since June 2004 they have awarded around £9 billion, billion pounds worth to projects supporting health, education, environment and charitable purposes. Also, it's a quick and easy way to get a small lottery grant in between £300 and £10,000. One disadvantage is that the club must use the grant that they get within a year for the project. And due to the high demand of this um, Program. This type of organisation has a lot of interest as most as some of the money goes to charity. So the Preston Sports Forum. So the Preston Sports Forum. A background on the Preston Sports Forum is that it's a voluntary leg development group made up of representatives from local sports clubs and run by a committee. The forum aims to provide a voice for sport and a physical activity for pre physical activity for people in the Preston area. It exists to ensure that all people in Preston can access the sport and physical activity of their choice at an appropriate level. To be a, the aims are to be a true representative voice for the voluntary sports centre within the city of Preston and create a Premier League network of sport. They also aim to increase membership to sport groups and clubs, to increase the number of coaches and officials that are in the Preston area, also to increase the number of volunteers in, in, in sport in the Preston area, to provide coach education opportunities, to provide club development opportunities, to promote effective links between schools and clubs, and also to promote links between universities and colleges in sport, and use volunteers and work placements. 
So an advantage of the Preston Sports Forum is that it's local and I know that they'll be extremely interested in our project as the project links in with a number of their aims. Disadvantage is that you can only apply for £500 a year and that's a small grant scheme and I think that our project may require more than that. So, what sources are we going to use? So after reviewing the number of the three different potential funders and got discussing with the members of staff at Preston North End and the community, we have decided to go for the Big Lottery Fund. We chose the Big Lottery Fund as we believe the project meets with the majority of the aims and, the, and feel that they will be interested in funding our project. When approaching the funding bid, I will take everything I've learned over the year in the module and also take what I've learned in doing this presentation into consideration when sending my funding application off to allow me the biggest chance of getting, gaining funding for my placement. I will also take into consideration the importance of a budget and marketing and promoting the event too. So what have I learned about developing funding bids? One, in factor I've, one important factor I've learned when applying for a funding bid is to find out if I was eligible when of receiving funding, as I know that Preston North End and the community generate a certain amount of profit a year, so some funders won't want to give us their money, as we already earn a certain amount of money a year. So I've had to discuss with Clint, my tutor, whether or not areas I should go for, which funders I should go for or not. I've also learned the important factor of market research when planning an event and funding application, and also the importance of a budget and how, how crucial it is when planning a project. So conclusion, overall during this presentation I have briefly explained the background of Preston North End Community Trust, I have expressed the importance of a budget and marketing, I have also evaluated a range of potential sources of funding and chosen the Big Lottery Fund. Altogether I have enjoyed completing my placement at Preston North End and hope that this presentation and the that attempt of a funding bid can help me with the opportunity to gain some more important funding for the club and I will be emailing my tutor Clint my funding bid once I've completed. So there are a number of references that help me with this presentation and thank you for listening. If you do have any questions please comment below the YouTube link.